with Cleet Callahan. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to Play by Play. I am Cleet Callahan. Tonight's matchup is going to see the Boston Red Sox face the Milwaukee Brewers. That's right. We're playing in Miller Park with some interleague play. We have a contest going today. If you like and subscribe to Play by Play on any or all of our social media platforms, you'll be entered to win a Boston Red Sox face mask. Did I say one? No, I meant to say two. That's right. Two Boston Red Sox face masks. We want to stay protected during the COVID-19 crisis, so uh, why not be protected in style? They are handcrafted and wonderful material, really, really high quality. Uh, without any further ado, though, let's get to some baseball. All right, so let's get to some baseball. We got a battle of the fours here. That means the, uh, the, the, the four spot pitchers here, the pitchers who pitch fourth in the rotation, Ryan Weber, so Ryan Weber and Freddie Peralta, I don't even know who the Red Sox could possibly put at the four hole uh, without any kind of uh, just gross speculation. You see, the uh, the entire season hasn't even started yet. Uh, therefore, who the hell knows what's going to happen with the Red Sox starting rotation with Chris Sale out and with nobody signed in the offseason. Needless to say, they are going to put their best foot forward here in fake baseball land. We're at Miller Park in Milwaukee, and uh, we got the Red Sox facing the Brewers. I want everyone to know that I am a diehard Red Sox fan, but you should know that this shirt, it's not a Milwaukee Brewers shirt. It is an homage, as they say. You see, there's a band that I really like called Misery Signals. And there we got the M and we have the S. Misery Signals from Milwaukee released this shirt, limited edition in 2019, when the Brewers made the playoffs. So I bought it because uh, I wanted to support the band. And hey, who doesn't really love the Brew Crew? I like the Brew Crew. I like a lot of National League teams. But growing up in New England, I got a row for the Red Sox. And they're going to be batting we first against Freddie Sox. Peralta here in the top the of the first the inning. Andrew Benintendi steps Andrew. into the plate. And we need to change our controllers. That's right. Nobody actually plays baseball in these games. It's just computer simulation. So... Freddy Peralta delivers the first pitch of the game, yep, and it out. is just outside. First pitch, according to my clock, 7.03 p.m. Andrew Benintendi steps in, ready to start the ball game and, and rock and roll. That Third one's also in. low. So I've been doing quite a bit of promotion, and if this is your first time ever watching Play by Play, please say hello. I love to see the fans. I love to see uh, uh, a bit of a fan base growing. And of course, if you know John Krasinski, please tell him I said hello and that he should come on to the show. Uh, we could probably do some sort of Zoom uh, set up to where uh, he'll be able to be, be a guest on a show that does not have any guests. So Andrew Benintendi's ahead in the count 3-0 Peralta. Oh, Benintendi swung, he went. He went, that could have been ball four, but the count is now three and one. Freddie Peralta in danger of walking the first batter of the game. And he does, that one's a bit too high and we got a base runner. Andrew Benintendi with a leadoff walk here in the top of the first inning. I gotta sit down, my butt's sore and my couch is broken. So yeah, I've been doing quite a bit of promoting and I'm happy about it. I think this is a fun idea and I would have been doing this regardless of the uh, pandemic out there in the world as Peralta throws another ball. Joe McDonald, Carl Dixon, Eric Summersgill, Freddie Ferguson. I don't know if those are real names or not. They're probably fake. But what I do know is is, is there are four umpires in this game. And, and Godspeed, let's, let's love those umpires. No, that's low. So that one's low. So uh, Freddie Peralta in the first two batters has only thrown one strike and really it wasn't even in the zone. Devers ahead 2-0 here. The pitch. That one is also low. Oh, Freddie Peralta having a lot of trouble finding the strike zone. Has not thrown a legit strike yet. This could be a long outing for him, I tell you. Well, he looks in. He gets the sign. And the pitch. That nope. one's high. He lost him. So, Freddie Peralta walks the first two batters of the game on nine that pitches. Hurt. He does not have it. Maybe he didn't take any warm-up pitches. It is April in Milwaukee, so maybe he's cold. 
And again, we got the retractable roof closed tight. I'm sure it's a delicious 70 degrees in that stadium right now. Look at the fans. They're wearing short sleeves. They're also computers. And another ball. Oh, man, the Red Sox are just going to sit pretty and wait for Peralta to get the job done. He does not have it right now. Peralta needs to get back on track here. He looks in, gets the signal. Bogart's at the plate. The pitch. Swung on and fouled off. We got ourselves the second strike of the game. It looked like it was going to be a ball also. It was a breaking pitch inside. And oh, that one misses outside. So two and one the count to Bogarts. Oh, if this computer simulation knows anything, if these ones and zeros are smarter than we hope, then uh, they will program the Red Sox to not swing at this pitch. The 2-1. Swung on and missed. And Ben Benintendi trying to steal third is out by a mile. So what did we learn today about algorithms? They don't mean jack squat. Bogarts hit and run, a hit and run, and he swings at ball four there and gets a strikeout. My goodness, wow. Things have certainly fallen downhill very quickly. We got J.D. Martinez stepping up to the plate with two outs and a runner at second. What could have been something very, very positive for the Red Sox was, uh, 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 it has evolved into something very, very much uh, boneheaded. Martinez watches strike one in there. You don't want to give uh, uh, the pitcher free outs, especially when he hasn't thrown many strikes. And he ropes one to the right side. That one's out of play, and now he's down 0-2. Why on earth would they have done a hit and run, let alone just swung on that count? Martinez grounds one pedestrianly to first base. And the Red Sox, despite Peralta's uh, misgivings, didn't do much there that inning. They ran into an out. You never want to make the first out at third. This is play-by-play -play after one half. Brewers coming up. I'm Cleet Callahan. So Ryan Weber takes the mound. In 2019, he had an ERA just over five after pitching 40 innings with a two and four record after only having three starts. The boy did a good job in Pawtucket, if he played in Pawtucket. I think he played in Pawtucket. But he's got the big boy ball right now. And he'll be facing the Milwaukee Brewer lineup, starting with Eric Sogar. I tell you, the Red Sox in that first half of the inning really blew a major opportunity. Hopefully he doesn't bite them in the rear end. Runner at first and second. The pitcher had only thrown two strikes, and they do a hit and run? Nah, you gotta sit on that pitcher. Anyway, I should just get over it. Let's move on. Sogard lost one to center field. It looks like Benintendi's playing out there, and he makes the catch. That's the first out of the inning. Take a look at the starting lineup here. Lorenzo Kane, Christian Yellick, Keston Hura, Brian Braun, Justin Smoke, Omar Navez. Orlando Arcia and the pitcher rounding it out there. So that brings up Lorenzo Kane with one out in the bottom of the first, facing Ryan Weber. He delivers. That's in there for a strike. Excuse me. I don't have a burp or a cough button. That pitch, swung on, lofted to left field. That one's driven deep, going all the way to the wall. And it bounces over the wall, hits the foul pole past the wall. That's a ground rule double. That did not look very strong off the bat, but it just kept floating and floating. It bounced right on the warning track, bounced up and hit the foul pole. Ground rule double. So Weber gives up with a double, and there's a runner at second with one out for the MVP, Christian Yellick. He takes strike one on the inside part of the plate. Christian Yellick, an unbelievable god amongst men in this game. Definitely the best player in the National League if I were to put my money down on him. Christian Yellick, the Mike Trout of the National League. The pitch, high and in, that's ball one.
Weber at the belt, looks the runner at second and delivers home. And Yellick fouls one back. Christian Yellick, very proud to say that he's been on my keeper league, my dynasty fantasy baseball league, for as long as he was eligible. I drafted the young man and kept him, and he has grown into a gorgeous flower of a ball player. The 2-2. Two -two. Outside and low, that's a ball three. That brings the count full. I tell you what, the Milwaukee Brewers have got a hell of a lineup. I really hope that they are playoff contending every year as long as they can. They're a fun team to watch. They're a good set of bats. Starting pitching is not something to be desired. Very similar team to Boston, except uh, just better. So we'll see what happens in this game. And Yellick takes oh, one just outside. And that is a walk. Good eye by Yellick, but that pitch was close. Weber trying to deliver, trying to just paint the outside corner. And uh, just missed. That brings up Keston Kiora, another guy on my Dynasty Baseball. Baseball, yep. My Dynasty Fantasy Baseball team. That's a mouthful. I didn't do my oral exercises. Kiora lofts one to right field. Settling under it is Martinez, and he makes the second out of the inning. Everyone with me now. Ryan Braun at the plate. Ryan Braun, God bless that man. What a great, what a great career he's had, huh? Well, except for all that steroid stuff. And Braun pops one up on the infield. This should do it. And Moreland takes it. That retires the side. So Ryan uh, gets Ryan out. And that's the end of the first inning. After six outs, this game is tied. This is play-by-play. -play. I am Cleet Callahan. Really I'm not drunk yet at all. I just had to hit him. Mitch Moreland. So Mitch Moreland made the last out of the last inning, had to run into the dugout, put his glove away, get his bat, his helmet, and get ready because he's leading off here in the top of the second. Freddie Peralta delivers nope. a ball. Take a look at the defense here. They're playing the shift. Moreland, uh, in his play-by-play -play career, has done nothing. The pitch, high ball two. Like I'm telling you, if I was in the dugout and I was the manager, I would say, do not swing the bat. Ball three. Hopefully the mid and bottom part of this lineup will take advantage of the fact that Peralta is not throwing strikes. He just done got it. The pitch. Swung on, grounded weakly to second, on the first, and he's out. Mitch Moreland either strikes out or grounds out weakly. Why on earth would he swing at a 3-0? All right, take a look at the defense here from the Brewers. Lorenzo Kane, 2019 Gold Glove winner, man center field. Everyone else is pretty darn good at their job as well. Omar Narvaez, who played for Seattle last year, also another guy on my baseball league. Oh, Michael Chavis in at the plate. Ball he steps in and he uh, takes ball one. Okay, look, I'm trying my best not to completely lose my cool here, but when Peralta's not throwing strikes, do not swing the bat. The 1-0, outside ball two, okay? He has only thrown two legit strikes this entire game. And he swings at the 2-0, grounds it weekly to third on the first for the out. Holy crap, it's killing me how aggressive this... Let's take a look. You know what? We're going to do a little bit of a Google. Let's take a look here at the sliders because I have no idea why the computer is swinging. At... It's all even. It's not like anything's different. Why they are so aggressive in the face at the plate when a pitcher has not thrown strikes. Vasquez swings at the first pitch, and he fouls one to the right side. All you're doing is allowing Peralta to settle in. There's one at the elbow, but did not hit him. That's ball one. One and one the count, two outs here, top of the second. The pitch from Peralta, outside ball two. Outside ball three. Kevin Pillar, the number eight hitter, is going to be on deck. And Vasquez, inside, inside ball, ball four. four. Good boy, Vasquez. He walks.
But again, there's two outs now, and we got the eight and nine here coming up. So whoop de free can do. Uh, you're just you're too you're you're uh, I don't know what to say. You know what? Uh, this is something that I need to deal with with myself. Now I need to be the one to calm down. Not be so this is probably why I'm not a professional play-by-play -play announcer. I just get too invested in what's going on. Ball one. Kevin Pillar, one letter away from Kevin Millar, the uh, famous spokesperson of the Red Sox back when they won the 04 World Series. Uh, totally a coincidence. Uh, the pitch. Ball two. That's ball two. So Peralta falls behind in the count to Kevin Pillar. He's upset, but I mean, he really shouldn't be upset. The guy, he needs to throw strikes or he needs to go back into the showers. That's what I say. All right, he's at the belt. He looks at Vasquez at first and he delivers. Oh. And that one just misses, 3-0. Kevin Pillar, if you swing the bat, I'm gonna slap you. Oh. Outside. Again, the managers in this game, they're not exactly smart. The, the artificial intelligence, the coding for the managers in this game, it, it leaves so much to be desired. All right, Ryan Weber, two outs so you're not bunting, all right? Run is at first and second. Just don't swing. He swings. Strike oh, one. one. Do not swing, Ryan Weber. Do not swing. He swings. Then again, these are both in the zone, so what the hell do I do? All right, so an 0-2 count. Peralta about to get out of his second jam in as many innings. The pitch. High and away, ball. ball one. One ball, two strikes. They would have they would have at least had a mound visit in the first inning especially the guy he, now I feel like he's warmed up that's low ball two or is he I don't know he certainly does have a chin strap for a beer so Peralta gets the signal from Narvaez and the two two pitch two on two out second inning swing and a miss he struck the pitcher out, and he gets out of that inning unscathed. So after one and a half, the score is tied at zero. Milwaukee coming up here on Play by Play. I'm Cleet Callahan. I want to give a shout out to my Milwaukee Brewer friend, uh, Pete Gurley. The first baseman. I met, I met Pete when I was working for Major League Baseball. Great guy, Brewers, super fan. Hats off, Pete. So Ryan Weber is off starting the, the bottom of the second, facing Justin Smoke. And he throws a ball, 1-0. I want to remind the audience, after this pitch, which is in there for a strike, that we are giving away two of these gorgeous face masks with the Red Sox logo on them. Two of them are going to be given away for free. All you need to do to enter this contest is like and subscribe on Twitch, to follow us on Facebook, and to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. The count is even at two, and I'll give more details to that in the seventh inning stretch. Count even at two, the pitch from Weber. High and away, ball three. We got a full count here. On deck, the catcher Omar Narvez. Narvaez, 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 Narvaez. The pitch from Weber. Oh, just outside. That one just kissed the corner. Uh, painted the black, but not black enough, I suppose, and he lost some. That's the second time Weber has walked somebody on about an inch. Buddy, uh, I say it's a game of inches, as they say. So. We got a runner on it first for the catcher. Omar Narvaez with Seattle last year had a dynamite season. Yes, he was on my dynasty fantasy baseball team. However, I don't think I kept him. Did I keep him? Who knows? Baseball doesn't even exist right now. That's why you're yeah. watching this. Strike one. 
It's certainly at this time that I will go on Facebook to ensure that people are watching. The 0-1 pitch, inside ball, ball inside. one. I gotta sneeze, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live here, so, ugh, if I sneeze, ugh, I think it went away. The 1-1 pitch, outside ball, ball out. two. I am just on Facebook right now saying that we are going live. The 2 1 pitch swung on, driven to right field, struck well. Giving chase is Martinez. That's going to bounce off the wall. Oh, wow. But because of the very, very slow Justin Smoke, that was a very long signal. Not very fast on the base pass. Justin Smoke with a speed of zero, and Narvaez with a speed of 10. That long double only counted as a signal. So a bit of dramatics here, but nothing super special. Brings up Orlando Arcia, facing Ryan Weber, who has runners at first and second, and nobody out near the bottom of the second. These runners on the, play, on the, uh, the base paths are certainly no threat to steal. However, who knows in this game, he's probably going to lay down a hit-and-run bunt. Swing and a fly ball. That's going to drift foul. That puts the count at one and two. The pitch. Swung on. Lofted to right field. That one's stripped in foul, but Martinez has it. And he catches it, and trying to tag up from second to third is Smoke, and he gets in there safely. Ooh, that was a gamble, but now it paid off, it looks like. And the Milwaukee Brewers have runners on first and third with one out. Take a look at the Red Sox defense. Forgive me, that was not Martinez in right field. That's Kevin Pillar in right field. Martinez playing left field. Benintendi in center, Devers. At the hot corner, yada, yada, yada. We got one out here for the pitcher, Freddie Peralta. Likely gonna show bunt. Does he? Nope, swing and a miss. All in one. We're live here. Twitch.tv slash, oh, Weber's at the belt. He looks the runners back. He delivers. Outside, Whoa, ball one. Play by play. I gotta be honest with you. Can't wait for the part of this where I don't have to beg people to join. Swing and a miss from Freddy Peralta, and that makes the count one and two. Tell your friends about play by play. Baseballism. I'm wearing your hat. Misery signals. I'm wearing your shirt. The pitch inside ball two. Okay, Ryan, just go at him. It's the pitcher. Just go at him. Two on, one out. Swing and a dribble foul. The count even at two and two, the bottom of the second. We got a whole bunch of twos. But we need to get out number two. And swing and a miss. So the strikers, the pitchers trade strikeouts. Uh, good, good sweeping breaking ball against the pitcher there. Peralta swings and misses. So we got two outs now here in the bottom of the second. And it's going to bring up the top of the order. Eric Sogard steps in, hoping to make something of the runners at first and second. The pitch from Weber. Ball one. My father just texted me saying that he tested for COVID negative. Hooray! And that's strike one. He's had a wicked cough for about three weeks. Tested for the COVID and it came back negative. Thank goodness for that. The 1-1 pitch swung on and ripped down the right field line. That's going to be a fair ball and extra bases. One run is in to score. Hitting third is Narvaez, he will stop there. And with an RBI double is Eric Sogard. And the Brewers take a one nothing lead. That pitch was right on in there, he turned on it, roped it right down the right field line. 
Pilar did his best to pick it up, but the slow-footed Narvaez had no chance of scoring. So now the Brewers have runners at second and third with two outs and a one-run lead. Lorenzo Cain steps in against Weber. He takes ball one. Speaking of uh, COVID-19, we're giving away Red Sox masks. All you gotta do is like and subscribe on all the social media platforms that play-by-play -play is a part of. And Lorenzo Kane lost one to center field, giving Chase's Benedetti, and he makes a diving catch to save the inning. Oh, shades of the Astros playoff series of 2018. Andrew Benintendi laying out, giving it his all, makes the diving catch, and that retires this side. But the Brewers score one, and they take a one nothing lead. Top of the third inning, the hero of the last inning there, Andrew Benintendi steps in. And what a diving catch. Benintendi. That's a definite uh, contender for the... Oh, Benintendi just rips one to left field. At full, oh, about four feet in front of the warning track. That ball just died. It looked good off the bat. Opposite field power from Ben and But yeah, that catch. Definite contender for the play-by-plays, play-by-play, play-by-play of the week. Presented by Play-by-play. Raphael Devers steps in. He's batting a very cool Nick Hexham, 311. And he takes ball one. Then he swings at strike one. So we got a 1-1 one -one count. The 1-1 one, one outside ball two. The 2-1, two low and away. All right, so the count's three and one. It looks like Peralta's having a little bit more trouble finding the strike zone again. Let's wait on it. No green light. Swung on and ripped to the third baseman. Playing deep in the hole because of the shift. The bat, that was a straight two. atom ball. Rafi Devers roping Hold one up. to the opposite field, but right at the third baseman. So that puts two outs now. Xander Bogart steps in to face Mr. Peralta. The pitch. Hey. Strike one. Right at the knees. Two very hard opposite field balls. Oh, wowee. That looked good off the bat, but it is just foul. Bogart's down 0-2, and he watches ball one outside. So two very hard opposite field balls hit this inning, but they result in outs. And Bogart's late swing on that one, dribbles one to first base, opposite field again. But he tosses it to the pitcher. The pitcher steps on the bag, and that retires the side. So after two and a half, Milwaukee has a 1-0 lead. This is play-by-play. -play. I'm Cleve Callahan. I'm not one of those three individuals. Those three individuals have been put on mute because I'm the one running the show. This is my business. This is my baseball yard, sirs. I don't know who I'm threatening. We're all friends here. Christian Yellick comes in, the perennial MVP candidate to face Ryan nope. Weber, and he watches ball one down low. Oh, and that was also low, trying to go low and away from Yellick. Not much he can do there. The problem is this game should have been tied or Milwaukee should have been uh, behind in the score. But, oh, Yellick fouls one in the back. That looked like it was going the opposite direction. That's the problem with two-dimensional video games is you tend to think things are coming at you when they're actually going away from you. And that one's inside, so that's going to be ball three on deck. Kessler. You see, the Red Sox, had they not been so greedy with the base running and with the swinging aggressiveness, and they just let Peralta throw the balls, man, oh, man, who knows what could have happened in that first inning. But we're in the third now. The 3-1 pitch to Yellick swung on and lofted high to the right side, but that's going to drift foul. And the count is full. The payoff pitch from Weber. Dribbled foul. 
trying to just fight that one off. That was a close pitch. But Gellick, being the hitter that he is, had no problem fighting it off. And the swing and the pitch brings a ball into right center field. That Intendi settles under it nicely and catches it for the first out of the bottom of the third inning. I'm seeing people now signing that. on. Please the say hello in the chat. Keston Hura steps up to the plate now. He's 0 for 1 in this game. And the first pitch from Weber is in there for strike one. I want to remind anyone watching right now that if you like me, <laughs> just in general, no, if you like and subscribe on all the social medias, you will be entered to win two Boston Red Sox handmade face masks to fight off the pandemic that is keeping real baseball from occurring. Weber strikes out Huron, a ball way out of the zone. That's his second strike out of the game. The and there's two outs now in the bottom of the second. Oh, he chased after a bad pitch there. Not like him at all. And then again, he did strike out quite a bit in 2019. What the hell do I know? Ryan versus Ryan now. The Braun style follows one back. The count's 0-1. Today's episode is sponsored by Diet Mug Root Beer. Diet Mug. When you think artificial sweeteners don't make you fat. Ron grounds one to Devers. Devers scoops it up on the first, and that retires the side. Easy peasy, Japanesey. Weber with a 1 2 3 inning. That uh, brings us to the fourth. At the end of three, Milwaukee won. Boston coming up. And uh, this is play-by-play. -play. I'm Cleet Callahan. It's Brutober time, says that gentleman or lady. All right, the left fielder, J.D. Martinez, comes in. He had a ground out in the first. Look at his big, big facial features in this game. I don't understand why they make him look like that. What I can tell you is Peralta delivers a ball high. Freddy Peralta down to 50 pitches. It uh, could have been a lot worse, but... Oh, Martinez lost one to right field, and that's fair! That's going to roll all the way to the corner on his way to second, and in there so safely is J.D. Martinez. So a leadoff double. Martinez going opposite field. He sits on this one and just slaps it the other way, keeps it within the lines. Oh, about two feet from going foul, and it rolled all the way to the wall. And he rolled all the way into second base. So Mitch Moreland, who, like I said before, has done diddly squat the entire time play-by-play -play has existed, is up to bat with a runner in scoring position and nobody out. He either grounds out, pops out, or strikes out. Really no drama when it comes to Mitch Moreland. Also, he bobbles the ball a lot. The pitch. That's high ball, too. So the Red Sox have a golden opportunity here to tie this one up with one swing and the pitch. It's a swing and a long fly ball on the right side, but that one drifts foul. Oh, it looked good off the bat, but it, it just twisted. The 2-1 pitch. Ooh, good nasty change up there by Peralta. And that evens the count at two and two. The pitch. Swung on by Moreland and skedaddled foul. Skedaddled, there's a word. We'll do it again, the 2-2 pitch. Peralta delivers. Oh, that one is in there. And Moreland has struck out looking. Ah, oh, Moreland. Moreland, with the count at two and two, I mean, that's a questionable pitch at best, but you gotta be protecting the plate, Mr. Moreland. So he's retired. There's one out now for Michael Chavis. First pitch is high and in. That's ball one. So like I said, Moreland, strike out, ground out, pop out. Not a very exciting first baseman at all. Chavis looks at the 1-0 pitch, swings and drives one. Not drives one. He hits one very, very normally to the shortstop, and he is retired. Uh, Martinez does not advance from second base. And now there are two outs in the inning. Martinez with a leadoff double. Might just come stranded. There's Christian Vasquez now at the plate, hoping to score a run. Peralta's pitch in there for strike one. Vasquez checked his swing, but it was good anyway. 
Peralta at the belt. He delivers. That's a curveball in there for a strike, and Vasquez finds himself down 0-2. So the 0-2 pitch, swung on and grounded very weakly right to the pitcher Peralta, who throws it a bit high to first base, but the first baseman catches it and keeps his foot on the bag that retires the side. So the Red Sox strand one in scoring position. Uh, after three and a half, Milwaukee won, Boston nothing. Here on Play by Play, I'm Pete Callahan. So uh, allow me to tell you, while Heidi Watney does her shtick, I'm going to tell you that on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, Cleet Callahan, C-A-L-A, wait, Callahan, C-L-E-A-T-C-A-L-L-A-H-A-N. Ah, just look it up. But I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Cleet Callahan. And of course, you're watching me here on Twitch at Play by Play. If you show me proof that you follow me on all three platforms, you are entered to win two, that's right, two Boston Red Sox uh, 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 handmade face masks. I strongly suggest you tell your friends to, uh, to, to do the same. Uh, it's not about winning, it's about getting me viewership. It's not about winning, it's about providing people with protection against the elements outside. Like I said, my father just told me that he tested negative for COVID. It's a great, great bit of news. I want everyone to stay protected out there. Uh, I would be doing this regardless of the pandemic, but uh, uh, I'm glad that, it, that, that I have something to do now because I've been staying inside every day. It's very, very boring. We got a pop-up on the left side. Despite the shift, Devers runs over, catches it while he's in the outfield. And that's the first out of the bottom of the fourth. That brings up Omar Narvaez. Uh, he had a single in the second. Woo! It's warm in here. The pitch from Weber, a slider that's in there for a strike. If anybody out there knows John Krasinski, please give him my information. The 0-1 pitch to Narvaez is right down the chute, and that is strike two. He hit it foul. Vasquez looking for something low. The pitch is low, and he ropes it. Wow! Narvaez ropes that one opposite field. An atom ball right at Devers, who hit an atom ball himself earlier in this game. That one going right to his head, but he gets out of the way and makes one of them Matrix-style catches. So there's two outs now in the bottom of the fourth. Arcia at the plate, hey. watches strike one. The count now, 0-1. Oh ball. Low ball one. One and one. Weber still in this game, throwing his 61st pitch right now. The fourth spot starter here, uh, uh, the, 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 the fourth starter in the rotation for the Red Sox, maybe. Who knows what's going to happen when baseball actually begins? Maybe the Red Sox could benefit from the year off. There's a pop fly to the right field. Pilar settles under it, and that retires the side. So after four, Milwaukee still leads by one, and uh, this is play-by-play, -play, and I am Cleet Callahan. Hello. Wait, did you just look at those dumb idiots dancing? I, I can't, it's, it's funny to me that the developers of this game, hey Heidi, how are you? You're back. The developers of this game thought it wouldn't be necessary if they were to program audience, like the crowd, doing these ridiculous dances that take up space in the disc. Okay, this, that's data that they are, are loading that Blu-ray disc with, okay? Stuff like this, that's fine. Having Heidi Watney, that's cool. Having fake conversations in the dugout, I like that kind of stuff. But having uh, dance, bad looking dancing in the crowd, what a waste of data. There's a grounder right to third base. Braun scoops it up on the first, and that's the first out of the inning. One pitch, one out from Peralta here. Why not use some of that data to maybe give the managers a smarter AI. Just a thought. 
I mean, I'm not looking for Westworld-style AI. I just want a manager that knows when to pull a pitcher. I want a manager that knows when to not do a hit and run. That's all I want. Shelby Miller, Alex Claudio, they're warming up in the bullpen. Peralta lasting far longer than I thought he would. And there's a fly ball that's shallow right field. Second baseman runs out, makes an over-the-shoulder catch. And the pitcher, was that the pitcher? I don't even know. There's two outs here in the inning. Andrew Benintendi up at the plate, top of the lineup. Peralta delivers a pitch. And ooh, good, solid 94 mile an hour fastball right down the chute. That's strike one. Peralta with the pitch. And Benintendi dribbles one right outside of the plate. Catcher has it, chucks it on the first. And then retires the side. So not much doing in this game since the second inning. And Milwaukee leads 1-0 still. After four and a half, this is play-by-play, -play, and I'm Cleet Callahan. Freddy Peralta looks like he'll be coming out again in the sixth inning as he steps into the box. The pitcher steps in. Again, like, I don't I don't hate that he's still in the game. It makes sense. He's pitching a shutout. Uh, it's the fifth inning. He should be back. So Austin Bryce and Heath Hembry are warming up in the Red Sox pen. We'll see how long Weber has in this game. But he, too, is pitching... Only a one-run uh, game. Peralta count swings and misses. Open. The count's 0-2. It's actually a pitcher's duel, if you can believe it. As he gets a strikeout there, Peralta swings and misses. That's the third strikeout for Weber. Who would have thought that a pitching a duel between Freddie Peralta and Ryan Weber would occur? But here we are. Here it's we baseball, baby. Anything can happen. We love it. That brings up the top of the order with Eric Sogard, who's one for two in this game, and he checks ball his one, swing no for ball one in the lower outside corner. This is Josie. Josie, say hello. The 1-0 pitch. Checked his swing on that one, and that one is also a ball. So Sogard's ahead in the count, 2-0. One out here, bottom of the fifth. The pitch from Weber. In there, strike one, 89 mile an hour, two seam. The 2 1 pitch from Sogar. In there, strike two, eight of the black there. And the count's even at two. Weber, he delivers. A swoo, a defensive swing from Sogar, and he fights that one off to the right side. Out of play. The 2 2 again. Sogard lofts it to Moreland at first, an easy line drive caught, and that's, that's the second out of the inning. Heads up play from Moreland there to catch that liner to him, and it brings up Lorenzo Kane, who's one for two in this game. He swings at the first pitch and lofts it to Pilar in right field. He settles under it, makes the catch, and retires the side. So we've played five full innings here, and the score is Brewers 1, Red Sox 0. On play-by-play, -play, I am Cleet Callahan. Thank you so much for joining. I keep wa wanting to remind everyone that if you like me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Cleet Callahan, and if you like me on uh, uh, Twitch, then you will be entered to win two handmade Red Sox masks to fight the pandemic out there on the streets. Swinging at the first pitch, hitting a grounded with a shortstop, playing on the right side of second base, was Devers, and he is retired very, very simply. That brings up Xander Bogarts, 0 for 2 in this game. Peralta delivers inside ball one. Senor Black, Senor Claudio, warming up in the bullpen. I can't see Black's first name. I don't know who that is because my picture is in the lower right-hand corner. I don't know who that was. Bogarts watches strike one go by. The count's even at one. The pitch, low ball two.
A uh, commenter says, didn't need the Westworld spoiler. I spoiled nothing. Westworld is a show about AI. Not sure how that's a spoiler by me saying that this game doesn't need Westworld level AI. Grounder to the hole, shortstop has it with a Jeter throw to first in time. Holy smokes. What a good play by the shortstop there to get Bogarts out at first. And there are two out in the inning. I want to kick myself in the face for calling that play a Jeter throw. Jeter, someone who I hope, uh, uh, I'm not going to say it. This is a kid-friendly show. Martinez steps in, and he watches ball one low and away. All I know is Jeter did not invent that. Jeter was a terrible, I can't stand, oh, Derek Jeter. Check swing, that's a ball. How about this? Grounder to the hole. You know what? Let's do this as the play-by-play -play replay of the game. Oh, I can't do the replay yet. I got to wait for this pitch to be over. The pitch from Peralta. Swung on and fouled to the back. Two and one the count. Come on, let me do a replay for crying out loud. There we go. All right, previous play. Ready? We're going to do this again. Unless the replay is for the foul ball. Give me a break. Come on, let me do the... Replay of the other thing here. Come on. Replay vault. Let's see. <laughs> uh... All right. We're looking at... Oh, oh, here we go. Bogart's got it. Okay, so I'm going to redo this play and not give him the credit uh, or not give Derek Jeter the credit of calling this play by him. Okay, here we go. Here's the play. Ready, set, uh, uh, go. The pitch from Peralta. Grounded to the shortstop in the hole. The shortstop makes a very good play and delivers a throw to first that is in time to get out Bogarts. Wow, what a wonderful play done by the shortstop like every other shortstop is supposed to do. There, I feel better. Let's get back to the ball game now. All right, we got Martinez at the dish, a 2-1 count. The pitch, swung on and fouled away. That evens the count at two. Another foul, and we'll do it again. Peralta and Martinez having a little battle here. Westworld is about artificial intelligence. The pitch. Hi, ball three. We got a full count. Okay, Westworld is all about AI and the surprise is gone. Yeah, it's in the description. Westworld is about AI. The pitch, Martinez hits a very, very normal fly ball to center field and the catch, he caught it. Now you got me. Hey, it's about artificial intelligence. I will not stop it. You know what? It's funny. This is the, uh, what, the seventh episode of Play by Play. I'm desperate for people to follow, to comment, and all I get is my dad giving me crap about spoiling a show by saying what the show is about. Did you know that Breaking Bad is about drugs? Oh, where are we now? Bottom of the six. Austin Bryce into pitch. He has relieved Weber of his duties. Weber doing a very... I said duties. Weber doing a very good job, only limiting Milwaukee to one run. Actually did a very good job on the mound. And Bryce facing Yellick. He hits one deep to center field. The Fenintendi's there, playing deep already. And he makes the catch for the out. Darwin's in Hernandez. He's going be warming up in the bullpen, just in case this gets a little bit uh, at the, uh, a little bit out, out, out of control. Keston Hira steps in now, 0 for 2 in this game with a strikeout. Uh, Dad, you should still watch Westworld, okay? Please. Keston Hira, facing Austin Bryce, the pitch, swing and a miss. He's down 0 and 2. So we got the 0-2 pitch coming from Bryce, and it's grounded up the middle. That's a base hit. Solid piece of hitting from Keston Vera, and the Brewers have a base runner here in the bottom of the sixth. I think he should have kept Weber in. That's what I'm saying. 
Should have kept Weber in. Yes, uh, uh, Dad, the wire is about uh, 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 conductivity. Ryan Braun steps in to face Bryce. He swings a hearty swing and misses at strike one. There's a runner on at first from Keston Hura. One out in the bottom of the sixth inning. I don't know how this game ends, but I can assure you that either the Brewers or the Red Sox will be victorious. Braun grounds one to second base on the shortstop for one on the first. A very, very easy, easy double play to get out of the inning. Now, who am I to say that it's easy, though? I've never played the infield. At any rate, Red Sox coming up now in the top of the seventh. That brings up Alex Claudio. He's taken over for Freddy Peralta, who is pitching a shutout. Don't know why the manager took him out. Claudio, a left-hander, to face the five, six, seven hitters in the top of the seventh. Runners coming at a premium in this game ever since the second or third inning, where it felt like this game was gonna be completely out of control. But Weber and Peralta both settled down nicely and this game is just a one-run game. Uh, the third baseman playing in the shift bobbled it. Oh, my God, Moreland, are you kidding me? So Moreland hits an opposite field into the shift. The third baseman bobbles it in the hole and still gets out Moreland. So, again, Mitch Moreland, in the entirety of the play-by-play -play franchise, has either struck out, grounded out, or popped out. He should have been safe on that play, but he wasn't hustling, I guess. Chavis grounds one to the shortstop, who feels it cleanly on the first for the out. So, Alex Claudio, only throwing four pitches this inning, has two outs. That brings up Christian Vasquez, who walked in the second, hoping to get something going here. Need a two-out rally for the Red Sox to stay in this game, getting shut out by the Brewers. Claudio... At the belt, looks in, gets the sign, and delivers. Sidearm, a changeup that is low for ball one. Diet, mug root beer. And you want the taste of root beer, but just not as good. Well, that's off the plate. That one's just off the plate, just a bit outside, and uh, that ball is uh, ball two. Hey, the Brewers, uh, that's the guy who says that. Uh, what the hell's his name? Why am I blanking on his name? Uh, help me out in the comments. Who's the guy? Bob Euchre. Oh, longtime broadcaster for the Brewers, Bob Euchre. Just a bit outside. I should watch Major League. Anyway, two and one's the count. The pitch swung on and driven to left field deep. That ball's going to, oh, get caught. Ah, who was that, Braun? Yeah, I thought Braun played third base. I shouldn't be doing this. It's seventh inning stretch time. Milwaukee leads one to nothing. Uh, let's all sing together. Take me out to the ball game. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to once more plug the fact that if you like me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Cleet Callahan, and if you... Uh, uh, follow me on Twitch at Play by Play and show me proof. You will be entered to win two Boston Red Sox handmade masks that were handmade right in this apartment. Uh, I strongly suggest you do it because safety is the number one issue. And if you live in Rhode Island, our governor just declared it a law that you must wear a mask outside. So if you don't want to pay for one, all you got to do is like me on Instagram at Cleet Callahan, Facebook at Cleet Callahan, Twitter at Cleet Callahan, Twitch at Play by Play. Happy to have you here on board. It's seventh inning stretch time. I am going to stretch my legs for just a moment. Okay, uh, this is the part of the live stream where I feel like I lost a lot of viewers. Uh, if you're still here, say hello. If you're not, uh, you can go right to hell. That's where I'm at right now. 
Oh. No, Dad, you're still here. Great. Great. I can't get John Krasinski to come on the show, but I got my dad. That's fine. I love my dad. Butchie. All right. Enough of that crap. So we're in the bottom of the seventh. Milwaukee is uh, winning. They are winning one nothing. Uh, the guy on screen probably did pee himself. He's definitely not wearing a cup. That is our fearless manager, Ron Renicky, who's calling in for the righty. He's saying, uh, that's enough of that Austin Bryce fella. And he brings in Darwin's and Hernandez, who, uh, at least in the play-by-play -play realm, and I should have been kept in, keeping score. I think once this thing blows up into something huge, maybe I'll have a scorer. A, sc a scorer. All I know is Darwin's and Hernandez is doing a, a, a wonderful job uh, during play-by-play. -play. Of course, that means I jinxed it. So he's going to face the six, seven, and eight hitters here in the bottom of the seventh inning. He throws a strike in there, facing Justin Smoke. Justin Smoke has to be the slowest player I've ever seen on this in this game. Uh, couldn't go first to third, and a ball hit in the right field corner. What a slow poke! Probably faster than I am. The 0-1 pitch. Swung on and driven to right field. That one drifts foul. And the count's now 0-2. The Red Sox only have six more outs to tie this game. We're playing in Miller Park. And I'm drinking a mug root beer. A diet mug root beer. That now one's low. One and two. Smoke didn't chase. Counts one and two. The pitch. Ooh, he swung and missed on that one, but it gets through Vasquez's legs. Let's see if the slow poke can do it. Yes, he can. Oh, so despite a speed of zero, Justin Smoke no, just stole first base. That ball was a nasty pitch in the dirt. Snuck right through the legs of Christian Vasquez. And Smoke, despite the strikeout, finds himself at first base with nobody out. That brings up the catcher, Omar Narvez, to face Hernandez, who at the belt looks smoked back and delivers. Round into the shortstop. It gets through. It gets through. And there's a solid base hit. Bogarts reached for it. It just got right through. Couldn't, couldn't extend it uh, farther enough. It just didn't get a good read on it. Who knows? But it's a base hit. And now the Red Sox are in a bit of trouble. Milwaukee hoping to get some insurance runs. Orlando Arcia at the plate, watches ball one. He's 0 for 2 with two flyouts. Milwaukee has runners at first and second. A very slow Justin Smoke at second base. A base hit does not guarantee a run. So the pitch. Oh, just off the plate. Just a bit outside. <laughs> My impressions are top notch. The 2-0 pitch from Hernandez to Arcia. Swung out and lost it into the gap on the right side, and that one's going to fall in. That's probably going to score two runs, at least one. In the second base is Arcia, and Narvaez, who is also not very fast, stops at third base. That's an RBI double from Arcia, and the Brewers take a 2 nothing lead. Just a perfectly placed gap ball there. Ladies and gentlemen, you are incomplete. That is a good piece of hitting, not a very good piece of pitching. So that brings in Abisail Garcia, who's batting for the pitcher. He's got runners at second and third and nobody out. Swings at the first pitch and hits a deep fly ball to left field. Martinez tracks it, catches it over the shoulder, and tagging up from second and third are a brewer, a couple of brewers, uh, Narvaez scores easily at home plate, and the Brewers take a 3-0 lead. So two runs given up by Hernandez. I most certainly jinxed him by saying he was doing well in play-by-play. -play. But shoot. That brings up the top of the order. Eric Sogard in to face Darwinson. 
And uh, the Brewers have a runner at third with one out. That one's low ball two. Thanks, Dad. So this inning started with a stolen single. That's ball three. Uh, a, a, a batter stealing first base, which led to then a grounder on the left side. A run scoring double and a sacrifice fly. Now we got the top of the order here. Eric Sogard ahead in the count three and one. Hernandez needs to limit the damage. He's at the belt and he delivers. Swung on, grounded to Moreland. He picks it up, steps on first, but the runner scores from third base. And the Brewers take a four-nothing lead. The center field. Your attention, please. Now, well, that's going to do it. It's going to do it for Darwin's in Hernandez, who did uh, got two outs, but also gave up three runs, and it brings up Marcus Walden. Marcus Walden coming in to get the last out of this inning. He will be facing Lorenzo Kane, who had a double in the first inning. 4-0 Brewers in the bottom of the seventh. The pitch from Walden. Ball one. High ball one. Swing and a miss. Lorenzo Kane chase one out of the zone. And that makes the count even at one and one. Walden working quickly, hoping to get the Red Sox bats back into the, 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 the plate, into the box, into the, into the dish. Nope. Throws ball two outside. A quick wind up from Walden. He delivers, and that one's strike two. Slider hitting the outside part of the plate. The count's even at two. Walden in the wind up. He delivers. Swung on and popped to the right side. Pilar settles under it. He makes a catch, and that retires his side, but not before the Milwaukee Brewers score three runs to make this game four to nothing. After seven complete, Milwaukee four, Boston nothing, on play-by-play -play with Cleet Callahan. Ray Black coming in, hoping to get a hold. Uh, never heard of this guy before. But he's going to be facing the eight, nine, and one hitters in the lineup. First up, Kevin Pillar, 0 for 1 in this game. He watches ball one inside. The attendance today, 27,541. I can say that that is not even close to who is watching this right now. There, strike one. So, Fire Reason, Fire Reason, Fire Reason, and Phelps. Warming up in the Brewers pen in case this goes awry. Ray Black with a 1-1 count delivers a ball low and away and the count is now 2-1. Senor Black, long, beautiful hair, sneaking out from back of his hat. At the belt delivers. And Pilar ropes one through the hole on the right side. Opposite field hitting from Pilar. That one was on the outside part of the plate, and Pilar just lunges after it, puts the ball where the players ain't. He's on first with a single. Good piece of hitting from Kevin Pilar there. His knee almost hitting the ground. That's a CNI single if I ever saw one. And that brings up to the plate Jose Peraza, pinch hitting. Jose Peraza from the Cincinnati Reds in his first fake season with the Red Sox, steps in against Ray Black and is down 0-1. The pitch, that's in there as well, strike two. Peraza just trying to do something here to get the Red Sox back in this game. With Kevin Pillar leading from first. The 0-2 pitch from Ray Black. At the belt he delivers. Swung on and hit right up the middle for a base hit. Jose Peraza with a pinch hit, base hit, 
And the Red Sox have a threat going now. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. He just slaps that one right up the middle on the right side of Black. Past the shortstop. Base hit. That brings up the top of the order. Andrew Benintendi swings at the first pitch and fouls one to the right side. Runners at first and second. Only one the count. Top of the eighth. Milwaukee leading four to nothing. Andrew Benintendi 0 for 2 in this game with a walk. He faces Ray Black. Black looks the runners back and delivers. Swung on and lofted, not very deep at all to center field. Kane makes the catch and there's the first out of the inning. So that brings up the number two hitter, Rafael Devers, hoping to get the Red Sox at least on the board. We don't want to be shut out. So Devers facing the righty Black and Black delivers a strike. 0-1. Devers 0-2 in this game, but a better time to get a hit than now. Pilar leading from second. The pitch. Nope. Inside ball low ball one. Jose Peraza leading from first with a pinch hit single. One out in the top of the eighth. The pitch. Swung on by Devers and fouled to the left side. Good to see the Red Sox swinging the bats uh, uh, aggressively. The one-two pitch. Inside it gets by the catcher, Narvaez, and the runners will each advance to second and third. Omar Narvaez, do they score that a wild pitch? Yes, they do. Ray Black just kind of aimed it poorly. It bounced to Narvaez's right side and went all the way to the backstop. And now the runners advance. We got second and third with one out. The two-two pitch to Devers still at the plate. Swung on to the right side, just foul, liner. We'll do it again, Black at the belt, looks the runners back. The 2-2 pitch to Devers. Swung on and base hit into the gap on the right side. That's gonna score two. Devers rounds first, retreats back to, to, to first, and he has himself a two RBI single. Oh, the, uh, the dangers of wild pitching. That put two runners in scoring position, and Devers put it right in the gap, and both runners scored easily. So Ray Black, who started the inning, did nothing but get an out and give up two runs and three hits. He's taken out, and now we have relief pitcher David Phelps coming into the game. David Phelps is going to be facing the three, four hitters, or at least the three hitters, Andrew Bogarts, Bogarts, if he gets a double play, this inning's over. Uh, Devers leads from first base. The Red Sox have cut this lead in half. Brewers lead 4-2 in the top of the eighth. The pitch from nope. Phelps is high and away, ball one. Help, one and oh. You can't tell me baseball is not exciting, even just a little bit. This is fun. The 1-0 pitch swung out from Bogarts and hit foul. That evens the count at one. So David Phelps might be related to uh, Michael Phelps. He probably isn't, but he could be. That's a fun fact. Xander Bogarts 0 for 3 in the game today. Takes ball two inside. Two and one the count. Devers leading from first. One out in the top of the eighth. David Phelps delivers. Bogart swings and misses, and that evens the count at two and two. Bogart's trying to get the bat on the ball, keep this rally alive. Not many chances left for the Red Sox. Bogart looks at Phelps, who delivers outside. That makes the count full. On deck, J.D. Martinez. Devers there, leading from first after an RBI single. Two RBIs, I should say. And we got a full count against Bogart's. David Phelps at the stretch, looks Devers back and delivers. Swung on to the left side, just foul. We'll do it again. The payoff pitch from David Phelps. High ball four. He walked him. Xander Bogarts with a walk. And the Red Sox have runners at first and second with one out for J.D. Martinez. Yes. Technically, every player on the field could be related to Gene Hackman, for all we know. Fans on their feet wanting their home team to get out of this inning. 
The first pitch to Martinez called a strike, a little low in the zone, but they gave the pitcher the strike. Yeah, maybe even Lily Tomlin. Hell, they could all be related to me. You never know. So David Phelps is ahead 0-1 to Martinez. The fans are on their feet, sort of. And he watches another questionable pitch that looked a bit inside, but uh, Phelps gets the benefit, and Martinez is now down 0-2. He needs to protect the plate. Phelps at the belt. He delivers in the dirt one for ball two, one. Yeah. We got some Red Sox fans here in Milwaukee in this fake crowd. And we got mostly Milwaukee fans. The Brew Crew doing their best to keep this lead alive. Runners at first and second. Martinez at the plate. The count's one and two and the pitch. Ooh, just inside. That's ball two. So the count's even now, two and two. Phelps looking into the dangerous Martinez and the pitch. Swung out and missed. Nasty breaking pitch from Phelps. He got Martinez to chase after it. And there's the second out of the inning. Phelps with a crazy sweet little pitch. Look at this. Ooh. The timing was right, but the break on the pitch was just too much for Martinez to handle. I don't think he was expecting that pitch. Good bit of, bit of pitch in there. Oh, great. Now we got Mitch Moreland. All right, Moreland, if you're going to do anything, now's the time. Swings at the first pitch and fouls one back. We got two outs. Runners at first and second. Top of the eighth. Sox down by two. Mitch Moreland, who is over the century in play-by-play, -play, faces David Phelps. The pitch inside. Oh, and Narvaez keeps it in front of him. That was a wild pitch if I ever saw one. But Omar is able to corral it. And nothing doing. 1-1 one, one the count. Phelps delivers. In there, strike two. And Mitch Moreland is on his way to continuing to be disappointed. So the 1-2 to Moreland. Swung on and foul to the right side. We're going to do it again. Runners take their leads. Running on contact. If Moreland can do such a thing. Swung out and fouled to the back again. David Phelps. Trying to get out of this inning. The pitch. Moreland fouls it off again. Not making solid contact, but then again, he's not striking out. So we got a one-two pitch again. Phelps to Moreland. Swung out and fouled again. Moreland. Fighting to stay alive. The 20th pitch from David Phelps. Swung on, grounded to the right side, through! It's a base hit! Rounding third, trying to score, and he does score his Devers. Oh man, Mitch Moreland actually got a piece of that ball, put it where they weren't. That's an RBI single. Aggressive base running was Devers. He was able to score without an issue. And the Red Sox now down by one. Scoring three times in the eighth inning. Phelps is out of this game. Brent Suter comes in. Brent Suter, not a pitcher you want to mess with. Last season in nine games had an ERA of .49. Very impressive out so this you inning know. is alive still is that Jonathan Lucroy? it is Jonathan Lucroy steps in the pinch hit for Christian Vasquez for some reason facing Brent Suter the lefty first pitch swinging ooh just out of the reach of the first baseman and foul the Red Sox have runners at first and second after the singles from Moreland Two outs in the top of the eighth inning, down by one. A base hit from Luke Roy could tie this game. The pitch, a high pop up to the right side. And that will retire this side. Okay, so the Red Sox strand two, but they score three. After seven and a half innings, Milwaukee four, Red Sox three. Here on Play by Play, I'm Cleet Callahan. It's a real nail biter we got here. Tell John Krasinski. Oh, 
great point. Was it Devers who scored? I don't know. Let's look at the replay. <laughs> who is this at second base? Who scored? You guys want to be ball busters, huh? Devers, right there. There you go. Mitch Moreland hit a single. Endeavor scored. Hey, man. <laughs> I've been saying that since the beginning, uh, the real Dr. Matt, whoever you are. The Red Sox certainly are struggling in play-by-play. -play. Their record for play-by-play -play is 3-3. Three and three. They're facing a very, very good Milwaukee lineup. Uh, but I find that Milwaukee and the Red Sox are fairly similar in their dynamic. A very solid lineup, but the pitching is the question. We'll see. At any rate, we got Christian Yellick, the perennial MVP candidate facing Heath Hembry. And he watches ball too low and away. The three, four, five hitters from Milwaukee up in the bottom of the eighth inning, the meat of the order, the sausage of the order, the bratwurst of the order. We're in Miller Park here in Milwaukee. The dome is closed because it's April. And actually I did, I looked at the weather. Right now it's like 40 degrees maybe, 35 degrees in Milwaukee. That could be wrong. I didn't look, I looked yesterday. Swing from Yellick. Long fly ball to right field, but not deep. Right in front of the warning track is Pilar. And he is out. So Heath Embry on four pitches gets uh, Yellick to fly out. And there's one out here in the bottom of the eighth. It brings up Keston Jura, who's one for three. He watches ball one, a slider. Whoa. Embry delivers. Swing and a miss from Jura. That even is accounted one. Heath Embry delivering. Trying to keep this a one-run game. Hopefully the Red Sox can come back in the top of the ninth and either tie it or take the lead. We'll see. That's baseball for you. Hey. Yura watches strike two right down the turtle's neck. This counts one and two. Embry, the stretch delivers that inside ball two. ball two. Two and two the count. <laughs> That's what I just said, umpire. The umpire just repeated me. I know what I'm doing, umpire. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and lofted into the gap on the right side. That's going to fall in and go all the way to the wall. Benintendi scoops it up, fires into the cutoff, man. But in standing with a double is Keston Hira. That one was just left over the plate a little too much. And Hira just drives it opposite field into the gap. And he has himself a double. His second hit of the game. So Milwaukee threatening a little bit here to get some insurance runs. It brings up the 0 for 3, Ryan Braun. Only one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Heath Embry on the mound. Yura leading from second. Ryan Braun digs in. Heath Embry at the stretch, delivers. Swung on first pitch, foul. Ryan Braun, not the player he used to be, but still a threat. The pitch nope, inside ball. ball one. Pura, the young, young ball player, takes his lead from second base. And Hembry delivers. Swung on to the right side foul again. This counts now one and two. Heath Hembry trying to get a strikeout. And he does. Swing and a miss from Ryan Braun. That ball, a breaking pitch, low and away. Braun chased it and did not connect. Decent bit of pitching there. Braun fooled quite a bit. And there's now two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Let's see, that brings up Justin Smoke. The only player in this game I've seen with a zero speed. He watches ball one. If Justin Smoke had a speed of 30 and above, this game would be out of reach. Uh, he has several times stymied the base runners of his own team by being such a slowpoke. Heath Embry at the belt delivers to Smoke, who swings at the pitch and fouls it to the left side. 
One and one is the count. Giura leading from second base. Inside and high ball two. Keith Embry hoping to shut it down and hope that the double he gave up doesn't bite him in the rear end. The pitch. Ooh, just a bit high. This counts now three and one. Justin Smoke, 0 for 2 with a walk, and he watches ball four. Embry just missed it on the high inside corner, and Smoke is able to work a walk. So Milwaukee will not go down without a fight here. They have runners at first and second, two outs in the bottom of the eighth. That brings up the catcher, Omar Narvaez. Narvaez, Narvaez, who is two for three in this game. He watches a curveball in there for strike one. Red Sox are playing regular defensively. At the ball. <laughs> no shift or anything like that, I guess. Narvaez, Omar, he watches ball one, and he swings at the third pitch, drives it deep to right field, but Pilar is able to track it down about four feet in front of the warning track, and that's gonna retire the side. That brings us to the top of the ninth inning. The Milwaukee Brewers four, the Boston Red Sox three, here on play-by-play -play with Cleet Callahan. Manager of the Brewers calling for the lefty. Hoping to get a save here. And yes, of course, he calls in the extraordinarily scary Josh Hader. Josh Hader with gorgeous flowing hair. Just beautiful condition, delicious hair coming out of the back of his, of his hat. And also he has a 2.6 ERA. Uh, the first pitch to Christian Vasquez. Wait a minute, Vasquez is still in this game, and who the heck did Luke Roy pinch it for? I'm gonna look at that. Vasquez swings and misses. Oh, the dangerous slider from Josh Hader. He might make very quick work. Look at that hair. A gorgeous, gorgeous mane. A frock on the top of his head. It's like a dead animal sneaking out the back of his hat. He's ahead in the count. 0 oh 2 to Vasquez. Vasquez fouls it off to the backside. Who the heck did Luke Croy pinch hit for? The pitch from Hader. Grounded foul. Fought off from Vasquez. Trying to get on base. Trying for a rally here in the top of the ninth. Red Sox down by one. The pitch just inside. That's going to be ball one. 96 miles an hour. The sidearm lefty facing the righty. Dangerous matchup. Hader delivers. Swung on and missed. Vasquez swings at a pitch well outside of the zone. And there's the first out of the top of the ninth. Josh Hader. Josh Hader with a hell of a good pitching arm. So, okay, we got two righties facing this lefty closer. Uh, he's on the bench. Do you even have a lefty on the bench? Did you even want? No, you don't want a lefty. You want the righties. Everything's working out for us, okay? Kevin Pillar watches strike one, and then he watches ball one. Counts even at one. One out, top of the ninth. Sox down by one. Josh Hader rips it in there, and Pilar ropes one through on the right side. Second baseman dove after it, but it just snuck under his glove, and Kevin Pilar with his second hit opposite field through a hole. And he's at first base, the tying run, almost exactly the same hit and swing that he had a couple innings earlier. So that brings up Jose Peraza. Oh, it was a double switch. That's a ball. Jose Peraza watches ball one. Jose Peraza, who pinch hit a couple innings ago, got a single and a run. Uh, Luke Roy was batting towards a pitcher in the sixth hole. I get it now. I know how baseball works, I swear. Inside oh, ball inside. two. Jose Peraza facing Josh Hader. Runner at first, one out. The pitch. Inside ball three, does he have the green light? I doubt it. Andrew Benintendi on deck. Jose Peraza looking to get something going. The pitch. Nope, that's it. Oh, he missed it. Oh, that looked like a good pitch to me. Thought the umpire calls it low. Holy smokes, Jose Peraza walks on four pitches. 
And now we got something cooking. Turn the oven on and put the bread in there because we're about to cook something. Yeah. Hey, I'm working out these slogans, okay? They're not all going to be winners. Andrew Benintendi steps in. Top of the Red Sox order. One out. Fans are rising to their feet. Josh Hader delivers. Swinging at the first pitch is Benintendi, but he swings right through a dangerous slider. First and second. One out. Benintendi fouls one back. 0-2 is the count. We need the rally puppy. Rally puppy. The 0-2. Swing and a miss! Oh my! Josh Hader made quick work of Andrew Benintendi, who swings and misses a three pitch strikeout. No question. Oh, he was so ahead of that one. Holy crap, he could have swung twice. So there's two outs now for Rafael Devers. The tying run is at second base. Josh Hader delivers. Swinging at the first pitch is Devers. He hits it high and deep to center field. Way back. It's off the wall. It was one run. It is the go-ahead run. He will score. And Raphael Devers just delivered a two-run double. And the Red Sox take the lead. Five to four. Oh, first pitch swinging. Devers crushes one to center field. Lorenzo Kane ran as fast as he could, and the Gold Glover had no chance for it. It bounced off the wall. In the score were two runs. Wow. Wow. Rafi Devers delivering his second two-run hit of the game. That's four RBIs for Rafael Devers, and the rally puppy works. The rally puppy works. Wow, that was exciting baseball. I don't know what was more exciting, that hit or Andrew Benintendi's diving catch in the second inning, a la the Astros series a couple of years ago. Wow, I'm sweating a little bit. Xander Bogart's in at the dish now. And he swings at the pitch and lofts one to left field, not deep, and Braun catches it. But not before the Red Sox score three times and take, sorry, two times and take a five to four lead. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Everyone completely deflated now at Miller Park. This is play by play. I'm Cleet Callahan. All right, let's see if closer by committee can work out for the Red Sox. Brandon Workman steps in to try to get the save. Lots of excitement here in the ninth inning. Rafael Devers with a two-run double, and the Red Sox lead it 5-4. to four. The Brewers have the 8, 9, and 1 hitters coming up here, and swing and a miss from Arcia against Workman the counts 0-1. I sure hope that people watched that. That was really exciting. 0-1 <laughs> the count, Workman to Arcia, swing and a miss. A four-seamer in at his shins, and he swings and misses at it. The 0-2 pitch. Oh, just off the plate. That's ball one. I tell you, that walk, that uh, that walk to Jose Peraza was questionable at best. I wonder if, if that was called a strike, it's going to happen. But that, that's baseball, maybe. The uh, one-two pitch is delivered for a ball, and now the count is two and two. Orlando Arcia trying to get on base. Now the Milwaukee Brewers, they're facing their first deficit of the game here in the bottom of the ninth. And a check swing from Arcia. Did he go around? He did not. And the count is full. Yeah, baseball's pretty great. I gotta tell you, folks, Baseball is pretty, pretty, pretty great. The payoff pitch from Workman. Swing and a foul to the back. Orlando Arcia will do it again. Inside ball four. He lost and that wasn't close. So Milwaukee has their tying run at first base. Nobody out here. This is, we're about to see the dilemma of not having a bona fide closer 
on the team. Ben Gamble comes in to pinch run for Arcia. And we have a pinch hitter at the plate in Manny Pena. Then again, you could argue Josh Hader is certainly the closer. A very, very good closer. And he gave up the lead. So who cares who your closer is? At least that's how I feel when it comes to fantasy baseball. This coming from a guy who has three current brewers on his fantasy baseball team. What do I know? Brandon Workman, 0-1. The pitch, outside ball one. Manny Pena at the plate. Ron Renneke, the fearless, legendary manager of the Red Sox. Ron Renneke looking on, hoping his team can pull ahead in the, in the record win their fourth game of play-by-play. -play. That one's outside, that's ball two. Berkman does have good peripherals to be a closer. Oh, okay, Matthew, my color commentary. Swing and a high pop to center field, not deep, Benintendi settles under it, makes the catch, and there is one out in the inning. On base against is very low, and he has a. I'm gonna say this like as if I came up with it. Brandon Workman does have good peripherals to be a closer. His OVA is very low, and he has a high K rate. Nope. I just don't know how often he'll get to save situations. <laughs> See, if you feed me the script, I sound really good. That brings up Eric Sogard, who is uh, fouling one to the right side. That evens the count at one. One out, one runner on in the bottom of the ninth. Red Sox up by one. The pitch from Workman is in the dirt, but Vasquez keeps it in front of him. And the count is 2-1. Top of the order for the Brew Crew. Hopefully they can uh, string some hits together. Uh, hopefully if you are a Brewers fan. Which I am not, despite the shirt. Again, this is a shirt. This is an M and that's an S. This stands for Misery Signals. Misery signals a band from Milwaukee uh, released this shirt limited edition when the Brewers made the playoffs last year. You know it. The pitch. Swung on to the left side. Giving chase is Martinez, and it's going to be caught. Oh, shoestring catch. Martinez, not the spryest, quickest man in the outfield. Very slow to grab that ball. Landed right at his shoestring. Snow cone catch. But he caught it, there's no question about that. And Milwaukee's down to their final out. Lorenzo Kane watches a knuckle curve in there for strike one. Workman trying to get the save. Runner on at first. The 0-1 from Workman. Swung on and fouled away. The count's 0-2. Milwaukee down to their final strike. Workman at the set. He delivers. Ooh, just low, ball one. Lorenzo Kane still alive. Tying run at first base. He will be going on contact. Surprised he hasn't, well, no, he wouldn't steal. Defensive difference wouldn't apply here. The pitch. Swing and a drive to left field. Way back. Oh, just foul. That looked good. That looked like that was the end of the ball game. But it wasn't. The one-two pitch from Workman. Swing and a miss! He struck him out in the Red Sox win! Brandon Workman gets the save, or the win. I think he gets the win because of Rafael Devers, who had four RBI in this game. Very clutch hitting with two outs where the Red Sox they come out victorious with some late inning drama and they take a 4-3 win-loss record to wherever they play next. I haven't decided yet. The Red Sox score five runs in the final two innings. Ah, oh, yes, Heath Embry gets the win, Josh Hader with the loss and blown save. And Brandon Workman with the, the save for, for the Red Sox. For the victorious Boston Red Sox. Wow, that was a fun game. Thanks for tuning in. I remind everybody, please like me at Cleet Callahan on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.
and follow me on Twitch, the ball game. and you will be entered to win two minutes. Boston Red Sox face masks. No Thank one you said you had to fight a pandemic game. and look like we a douchebag at the same time. Played. You should look cool. You should look cool when you're fighting pandemics. Tell your friends about Play by Play. What a fun game. Thank you so much for tuning in, Dad and my brother Matt. Have yourselves a great time. Good night, everybody.